welcome to part two. Uh, the first one here we have Tina the Tequila Tiki Tini. <laughs> she's a Digi stamp I did uh, last year for Halloween, was it? I'm pretty sure it was last year. Maybe it was the year before. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, anyway, uh, so basically I just drew bones around the border, just running with the, uh, the little voodoo theme, even though I am, like, totally against voodoo. I mean, I'm not against it, but my mom definitely taught me that I wasn't supposed to, uh, look into all that stuff. So, this is just a fun little image, and, uh, and yeah, I really like using her. It's fun just to doodle all over them. I love black and white lines, so this is... It's just a lot of fun playtime, I guess. And uh, and then on the left, I just drew a bit of a sketch of a woman. Maybe if that digi stamp turned into a woman, I don't know. It was just fun. I mean, to be honest, a lot of these pages are just playtime for me. And uh, and yeah, the next one. What have we got here? Uh, oh, these are the new tags, digi stamps. The uh, the set of tags, the tag teams. Is that what I call them? Um, so I've just got four of them on this page and I wanted to do something relatively simple because the rest, I mean, I'm not going to lie, doing all of that black and white doodling, it was sending my brain kind of crazy. I felt like I was watching one of those, uh, like hypnotist wheels the whole time, just the lines and everything. I felt like my, I literally was just doing half of them cross-eyed. So I wanted to do something a little more simple and give my eyes a break. Uh, so yeah, these I just turned into like a, a banner, you know, those little flags, and um, and just put strings and lights and embellishments and I think it's actually kind of cute. I would probably put this in a journal or a planner insert or something, and then crowns on top just because they're all queens. Uh, but yeah, I love that little page. This next one is uh, a bit of a fashion-inspired spread. I guess not fashion, but these two stamps, it's just the same stamp and then I flipped it and uh, and overlaid them on top in, in Photoshop, so I actually printed it out like that. Uh, and I just wanted to add clothes on them because I think these are great if you're uh, worried about body proportions or if you're, uh, you just want to decorate something, but you don't want to have to do all the working lines. I love to use these stamps as a jumping off point. And I have another video up I just put up about using the uh, Jane Davenport stamps as jumping off points too. Uh, I think it's it's great to use the stamps just as they are, and I definitely have examples of that too. Uh, but for me, I like to use them to eliminate all that boring work at the start, putting in, you know, sketching the proportions out and making making sure that the eyes and the nose are in the right place. And um, you know, it's it, that stuff can get a little repetitive for me. So this I just like to do. Um, instead, I like to just work straight on top of the digi stamp. And if you print them out really, really faint with really, really, you know, in a really, really light setting, you can almost just work straight on top of them and, and get rid of those lines. So it depends on how proficient you are in Photoshop, I guess. But, um, but yeah, it, you can make it work either way, even with black and white, just adding stripes to the body. I mean, they look like cute little dresses and it really was nothing. I just literally added a brush stroke to those, to those digi stamps. So, uh, I like those to, to play with little fashion designs. They're kind of my base for fashion if I want to do it quick oh and the washi tape cityscapes I love the washi tape cityscapes uh, my new favorite obsession here we've got uh, two more these are really really old digi stamps these were kind of the first ones when they're all inspired by little flowers uh, and this I just wanted to put them in a garden and, and do all of that really fun floral uh, doodling or zentangling I love the abstract florals I think it's so much fun you just, I mean, they're simple shapes and, and you can decorate every single one different and it looks like you spent a million years on it, but really you just, you're just doodling. I'm still integrating them into the, to the back at this point. I'm still going out, outside of the, uh, where I fussy cut it and it's kind of not neat. I'll still go over with the black Sharpie and try and blend it into the background. You can use that technique too, if you've got a colored background, but obviously it's a little harder to color match. That's why I like it in black and white, because I just have to pick a black, and it doesn't exactly match. I mean, you can totally tell that I've been colouring in on it, uh, but 
your eyes are more forgiving with the black and white. So at first glance, you're like, oh, it's a black and white image. And then if someone really wants to go in, they can dissect it and pick it apart and see how you did it. But to be honest, you can do that on most, on most works. I know we've all been to, well, maybe not all of us, but I definitely go to galleries and I try to look through the, the layers of acrylic paint to see the working lines, just because I like to see that someone you know, I like to see where their brain went and what they needed help with because we all need help. We all need a starting point. None of us can just sit down and do it perfectly first first go, if ever, really. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid to show your working lines. Don't, don't think that it's a mistake if people can see that those two blacks don't exactly match. The fact is you just, you know, you, that, that's how you did it. And, it's, and the eyes can be very forgiving. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, here we've got... What's her name? Cherry. Cherry. She's like a pin-up type digi stamp that I did because I was practicing with uh, stamps. This is before I uh, really even used the stamps that I had. And uh, I used them as tattoos all over Cherry. So this one I'm just drawing the tattoos in. And uh, giving her a few embellishments. And then now putting stars all over the background. I um, think I write a message about what a star means to me. And... Uh, I guess it's a little deep for what I usually do. I don't usually journal about stuff that that deep or introspective. But, um, I don't know, I was feeling it that day, I guess. I love stars. I used to have such an obsession with drawing the perfect star. Like, I would measure out, you know, where the points should go. And I'd have, a, I'd have a midpoint and I'd make sure that all the triangles came off at the right angle. And now, I hate that. I just, I love abstract stars. The quirkier, the better. So uh, it's, it's funny how as you keep going and as you keep practicing and developing your style, things like that can completely change. What you thought you once hated could be something that you now love. I'm still hating highlighters though. If anyone's interested what I still don't like, I still can't get used to using highlighters. There's something about the neon color that I'm just not totally into just yet. But that's been since I was a kid. Highlighters were just never really my thing. I've tried. I've definitely tried to integrate them into some of my works, but I don't know. I'm still a little off about it. <laughs> this was the first digi stamp I did. Daisy. She's so cute. A little bit of an abstract floral thing here. I, I was playing with the Jane Davenport uh, journal tapes. I love that they're white because you can bring back to life some of these black journal pages and uh, without obviously laying down paint or anything. And they're great to just put in text or you know, the washi tape cityscapes or anything, uh, anything that you want to add the white back in in big blocks. So I love that. And of course, what would, uh, what would one of my art pieces be without a bit of a fashion inspiration? So here I've just used another one of the tag team stamps. I used the uh, Anna Wintour one, what I call the Anna Wintour one, and, uh, and just made her a bit of a fashion Godzilla in another washi tape cityscape. And you can see just adding a few simple shapes to that tag, it suddenly goes from a tag to a coat. So try and think outside the box when you're using some of the stamps. See what general shapes you've got and then just identify where those general shapes occur in other works that you like. And you can literally uh, transform what you're using just through the shapes that you identify in other pieces. So uh, that's a technique I like to use too. Anyway, I'm just about to show you the flip of the final product. I hope you like it. Get on the giveaway and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.